So, uh, before I start getting into, like, predictions and all that stuff for, uh, these episodes, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for everyone who donated and spread the word about the fundraisers I was running. Uh, if you don't know, I got the incredible opportunity to sit down with Amphibia creator Matt Brawley and Owl House creator Dana Terrace for an interview, uh, and it was absolutely amazing. I think they said a lot of really insightful things uh, in that interview, and uh, you get a little bit, a little bit of a sneak peek for uh, for season two. Uh, Dana shows a little screenshot, which was uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go check that video out. Again, the response on that was just absolutely incredible not only for the interview itself but just how quickly uh, all you guys donated uh, I had that set for like a month and you guys hit the goals in like a couple hours so uh, just th thank you again uh, again the, the response to that has just been absolutely wonderful and incredible and beyond my expectations uh so thank you for that that was a wonderful birthday gift uh to myself the timing just kind of worked out that way but uh but yeah thank you again uh but in talking about both these episodes we have the second temple and barrel's warhammer so the second temple took on the first temple that was like the marcy temple this temple is going to be like the Anne temple the the heart temple uh and we get the return of the character uh valeriana i never know how to pronounce her name but she showed up in bizarre bizarre so i'm happy that she's gonna be showing up again uh because i mean she's just seemed like such an interesting great character and it would really suck if she was just like a one and done uh so i'm glad they're bringing her back uh ultimately i i think they'll they'll pass you know this temple they'll recharge the gem and everything like that but uh for like the trial i'm most interested to see like what the trials are going to be for marcy it was humility learning humility and not you know just always always using her brain and always being a, a strategist so i'm curious to see what Anne's gonna have to do uh it in this episode uh but then we have barrel's warhammer where we're gonna where we're gonna be checking in on sasha and grime uh and they showed a little promo for that already uh and it looks awesome they're gonna have to get uh, a hammer barrel's warhammer and whoever has that is basically like the the ruler of of the toads kind of and so like yeah they're probably gonna get it because there was that shot in the promo of sasha and grime holding uh the warhammer and uh then you see toads i shouldn't say you see them invading newtopia but you see a bunch of toads in newtopia so uh they're probably gonna get it and they're probably gonna get all these toads on their side and uh yeah I think from these two episodes, like, we're just going full steam ahead. Like, once we hit these two episodes, like, it, we, we are in it. Uh, which is really exciting, because uh, True Colors is going to be, like, a hell of a finale, I feel. Uh, just everything has kind of been building to this this moment of True Colors, so I, th I think we're going to finally start to see that momentum really start to take off. So, uh, super excited for both these episodes. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Hop hey, look! So cool. I love the creature designs. I think they're awesome. Oh, he has a little hat. I triangulated the tracking beam from the green stone. Mercy, I love your foot. Yay! Just beyond these snowy gates, a grueling, perilous temple awaits. I, I'm, I'm glad that Marcy decodes all this stuff for us so I don't have to, because she does it way quicker than I do. Maybe we have to rip someone's Hi. heart out. Oh, probably not that. Oh, she just set up shop here. Here, Ian. Temple. Out to lunch again. Why she was out to lunch? Because it's the most important meal of the day. That's breakfast. I am the last of an ancient order. Our purpose was to study the sacred okay. stones and temples. Ooh, I should very much like to hold it. Oh, uh, no. I'd rather hold on to it. <laughs> Since this temple is my responsibility, you all must do exactly as I say. Like, people are in charge, like, left in charge of these? Didn't you see how she looked at the music box? Uh, yeah. Plus, she owns a parrot. Only bad guys own parrots. <laughs> That's right. Oh no, she's trying to get them killed. Oh, oh, oh mercy! <laughs> oh man, she's trying to get them killed. She wants that box so bad. Rumbles are never Nothing good. much. And, and, and. Hey, you guys gotta get out of, huh? Out to lunch. How is everyone out to lunch right now? <laughs> you are full of such fraud spit. Oh. 
Oh. That was unexpected. Hey, you got wow. <sighs> Where are we? What did you do? Just show me and my friends where the temple is already. This is the temple. Never. I can return the box to its rightful guardian. Me! Huh? Oh. oh. Hey, wait! No! Okay. She's she showed that oh, she's carrying it. You did steal the music box, did you not? I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna save her anyway. Yeah. Anne's not a bad person. She can be selfish at times, but she's got her heart in the right place. We have been waiting for someone like you for such a long time. Yeah, um, this is like, this was the trial. Without responsibility. There we go. All right. In the name. Oh, that's how it gets charged. Cool. I like that there's like different ways that it gets charged. Oh no. Only half? Why only half? All right, let's, let's buffer a little bit quicker here. <laughs> Up. Let's go! Oh no! Oh no! I mean, honestly, this actually might be a good thing because if it's not charged all the way, maybe Andreas can't go through with his plan. Honestly, I feel like that will help them because I feel if it's not charged all the way, that Andreas can't do whatever plan he has. But my God, here we go, Sasha. Sasha, 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 what have you been up to? Oh wow, this guy's super oh, old. Yes, she's my sister, and I may have teased her quite a bit when we were tied. Oh, what? That's okay. It. Now we really are a team. That that symbol has shown up before on the eyes of the like creature in the basement of Andreas's castle, and uh, also Frobo's eyes. I'm wondering if there's like a connection between all that. <laughs> the t-shirt cannon. <laughs> Nicely done, Grimothy. Grimothy? No way. They must be talking about Anne and Marcy. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. They're working together without me? You, what did you want them to do? You dropped yourself from the tower and aligned yourself with Grime. What'd you want them to do? This guy reminds me of like a character from like Hollow Knight. Great, done. You'll have it in your crypt keeper hands by morning. Man, just like... The imagery of Sasha, like, standing above, um, Percy and Braddock at that, like, grime cower, like, that's just such compelling imagery for Sasha's character because her whole main thing about her character is that she always likes asserting herself over others. Beryl gave his life defending a helpless village from a terrifying beast! I wonder if Beryl is that toad in the picture in Andreas's uh, basement. If things get too wild out here, just give me a signal, and I'll call the whole thing off. A signal? What kind of signal? <laughs> What's a photo? Just see, she has moments where she's genuinely like nice and caring, but man. Hey, Sash, thanks for that. I oh. feel better already. <sighs> I wonder if they're gonna strike the pose, and then she's still gonna like press on with it anyway. Like manipulation is just like a part of her character, so just. Even if she's not intentional with it all the time, I think it just comes across. Was it like Thor's hammer? Okay, game. Can't, On three. Can't One, take it two. out. Who knows where it'll come from? Oh! That's really big. Oh. <laughs> Steer us closer. I figured this. What? She wasn't Trust gonna me. go through with it. Oh, Sasha. <laughs> this reminds me of like a Legend of Zelda right, boss. <laughs> oh, don't endanger your friends. I'm getting the Warhammer back to the tower. Uh, I mean, that's smart because technically you'll get it there. Mm, that's clearly a narwhal worm being ridden by a hummus. Heading a narwhal worm. Us. All right. Oh. I can't. Oh uh, gosh, she got her, her glowy powers. <laughs> oh no. It's got like jetpacks. Dink. <laughs> oh god. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Well I mean like I knew this was gonna happen, but just still. Yeah. We trusted you, and yep. you didn't care one bit about what happened yep. to us, as long as you got what you wanted. Yep. That's not true. Yep. Besides, goodbye, Sash. We hope is... you pull it off. 
We really do. Gonna feel like Anne and Marcy That's leaving enough, her. Lieutenant. Goodbye, Percy. Goodbye, Braddock. Oh uh, boy. That's gonna hurt Sasha a lot. <sighs> Everyone keeps leaving her. At least from her perspective. I mean, she didn't treat Anne and presumably Marcy the best. But she still lashes out. Oh boy. Oh, she's such a complex character. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens when they all meet up in the third temple. Really interesting. Can't wait. So with these two episodes, I feel like we're really starting to pick up momentum for the season two finale, True Colors. One of which we continue to see Anne and Marcy's journey to recharge the gems, and the other finally checking in again on Sasha. We'll start with the second temple first. This episode takes us to a new area, the Amphibia Arctic, and I always love seeing new locations, especially since we get to see new designs of creatures like the woolly mantises. By following the beam from the green gem, the group is able to find the entrance to the second temple. And thank god Marcy decodes everything because it makes my job so much easier. But this leads to Anne and Sprig meeting Valeriana again for the first time since Bizarre Bazaar. That episode was huge for the show, so I'm glad that we get to see Valeriana return and give us a bit more lore. It would have been a shame if she was only a one and done character. But it's revealed that Valeriana is the last remaining member of an ancient order who studied the gems and temples. Since she says she is the last remaining member, I'm wondering if there were others who were in charge of watching over the other temples. The other question I have is what happened to the rest of the Order? Did it just die out over time, or did something happen that caused the Order to be destroyed or disband? I'm sure we'll continue to learn more with the Third Temple and True Colors. Now this temple in particular is Valeriana's responsibility. The trials for this temple are very different than the previous. There were pretty clear set puzzles and trials within the first temple, but here Valeriana is the one initiating the trials for Anne and judging her character. These range from sacrificing her coat to protect others, to trying to save someone from an avalanche, to challenging Anne atop the temple. We pretty much knew that this temple would focus on Anne and have a theme of heart, but I always wondered what the trials were going to be. Going into this episode, I was thinking more it would be like a heart versus mind kind of thing, sort of the vice versa of Marcy and the first temple. But it's revealed that Anne needed to learn responsibility. Now, when Anne got to Amphibia, she was definitely a more self-centered character. She wasn't a bad person, but sometimes made bad choices. But over the course of the show, we see how Anne has grown and learned to put others before herself. I mean, this was always a trait of Anne. She did get the power of the blue heart gem for a reason, it's just that we are seeing it more now. When Anne is facing off with Valeriana atop the temple, she even acknowledges that she can be selfish at times but takes accountability for her actions, specifically for lying and stealing the Calamity Box. Noting that it's because of her mistakes that she's learned it's better to do the right thing. And this is a huge development on Anne's part. Like I said, we as the viewer have been seeing this unfold, but it's nice that Anne finally acknowledges it herself. And as a side note during this moment, Valeriana says that she is the owner of the Calamity Box. This was kind of brushed over pretty quickly, but she could be telling the truth since her being part of the order that studied the gems and temples would make her a logical choice for being the one who had the box. But I am sure in due time, all will be revealed on the history of the box and how it wound up on Earth. But with Anne taking accountability and responsibility for her actions and even saving Valeriana, she is deemed worthy of holding the box and charging the gem. And another side note, Valeriana says we've been waiting for someone like you. I know she has her parrot companion, but this could be hinting that some of the order still remains. Now when they charge the gem, the blue in Anne's eye only drains halfway, whereas in the first temple, Marcy's eyes drained completely. Additionally, the gem itself was not charged all the way, since the process was not complete. Honestly, I feel like this will be a blessing in disguise, because whatever Andreas is planning, it seems he needs all of the gems charged. If the blue gem isn't, then this likely throws a wrench in his plans, but we'll see in due time. This episode definitely threw a lot at us in terms of plot since Valeriana revealed a ton, but I think this was a really great episode for Anne. Season 2 has been a big elevation for the show. 
Since they are expanding on so much, Anne's character development has been a bit more subtle, but with this episode, we get to see Anne's character front and center. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I feel like these two episodes are really the point that we're going to be going full steam ahead for the finale. And I feel in these next few episodes, we're going to be seeing a lot more development with Anne, Marcy, and Sasha, especially with the third temple next week. But speaking of Sasha, it's been a while since we last saw her, that episode being Toadcatcher. Towards the end of the first temple, Yunnan mentioned a meeting of the Toad Lords, and we are seeing that here in this episode. And not only that, it ties in with Sasha and Grime as they look to gather forces to rebel against Andreas. We get introduced to some new characters, Captain Bufo of the East Tower, Captain Beatrix of the West Tower, and Captain Aldo of the North Tower. It's also revealed that Beatrix is Grime's sister, and his first name is Grimothy. Also, by process of elimination, Grime was in charge of the Southern Toad Tower before the events of Reunion. Now, Sasha and Grime, along with Percy and Braddock, are trying to win over the Toads to get more forces. Percy, Braddock, and Grime are not feeling so confident, but Sasha is the one to try and lift their spirits. Sasha is usually seen as a manipulator, but she has her moments where she can actually be a great leader. Now, this could just be my over-analytical theory brain at work, but the eye symbol that is also on Sasha and Grimes' pauldrons has a similar resemblance to the eye on the creature seen at the end of the first temple, and even Frobo's eyes. This could just be a coincidence, but I thought the similarities were interesting enough to point out. Now, while the Toad Lords like the idea of the rebellion, they aren't sold on the plan and they also mention that there have been rumors of two humans working with Andreas. Sasha is quick to connect the dots that the two are likely Anne and Marcy, and she takes this as well as you would expect, which is not well. Now, Sasha definitely has not always been the best friend and treated Anne poorly at times, and presumably Marcy too. In Reunion, we see Anne finally stand up for herself, and from Sasha's perspective, having Anne do so and seeing how close she is with the planters, she feels replaced. And by letting go on Toad Tower, she made it pretty clear, at least in that particular moment, that she didn't want to stay by Anne's side and work things out. On one hand, it's hypocritical of Sasha to be mad that Anne and Marcy are working together, since Sasha let go and made no attempt to find Anne or Marcy afterwards. On the other hand, Sasha has a lot of complicated feelings on the situation and clearly still cares about Anne and Marcy. So with the two of them working together and her and Anne already having a strained relationship after reunion, then it makes sense why Sasha would be so upset in feeling replaced and forgotten. Also, we as the viewer know that Anne and Marcy do want to find Sasha, however, she isn't aware of this, so it definitely makes sense why she would have this reaction. In a fit of rage, Sasha accepts the challenge of finding and retrieving Beryl's Warhammer, a weapon that for the one who wields it is the leader of all the Toads. And I can't help but wonder if the Toad seen in the picture in Andreas's castle is Beryl. Beryl the Brave was a Toad who gave his life to protect a village from a beast. The hammer is said to still be guarded by that beast. Now, Sasha, seeing how freaked out Percy and Braddock are, tries to comfort them and give them a signal when they want out. Sasha has definitely made some bad choices throughout the show, but she can be a good friend. It's just that she can be very selfish in her choices and hurt those around her, something that we'll see later in the episode. The group is able to find the hammer, but the narwhal worm that was guarding it wakes up. Percy and Braddock want to bail, but Sasha can't put her own priorities behind her friend's safety. Now, Sasha has always been a good leader, flaws and all, and we see that here with her plan to get the hammer. It ends up destroying their boat and putting them all in danger, but when it comes to getting what she wants, Sasha is always good at making a plan. I also find it very symbolic that Sasha throws off her cape with the symbol on it, showing that she is essentially going solo and doing this for herself. Unfortunately, her plan backfires and she loses control of the narwhal worm. And even with Grime begging her to stop so they don't all die, Sasha is defiant. And I think it's pretty telling that Sasha would rather risk death for herself and those around her than just failing at something. But it's when she's trying to remove the hammer that she brings up that she doesn't want to fail, especially with Anne and Marcy getting by without her. I think we all knew that Sasha would have a glowy eye moment like Anne and Marcy did, but what triggered it was a moment of rage of her fearing failure while her friends move on without her. Sasha's gem represents strength, and she's definitely a strong character. She's determined and a good leader, but can be manipulative and force her will on others. It's both an asset and a flaw. But with her powers awakening, I'm wondering how the episode next week, The Third Temple, will go, especially with one of the gems not being fully charged. 
but with Sasha lifting the hammer with the help of Grime, the two are able to stop the narwhal worm and present the hammer to the lords. Keeping their word, they offer their support for the rebellion. And while Sasha is happy in this moment for overcoming the challenge, she's quickly brought down with Percy and Braddock taking issue with her behavior. And in this moment, Percy and Braddock parallel Sasha's relationship with Anne and Marcy. She'll be understanding one moment and then the next throw everyone's feelings away for her own motivations and desires. And if she gets what she wants, she considers it a win for everyone. But I think in this moment, Sasha is hit with the cold hard reality of how her actions affect others. Especially since she was already feeling slighted by Anne and Marcy, Percy and Braddock leaving is just another slap in the face. The interesting thing here is to see how Sasha responds. Will she double down in her behavior or will the feeling of losing two pairs of friends lead to her reevaluating her choices? With the third temple happening next week, I'm guessing we'll get a glimpse of that and see what direction she'll be heading in before we get to the season finale. But overall, both episodes were fantastic in progressing the group's journey with the Calamity Box and checking in on Sasha and Grime as they prep for their rebellion. With the third temple next week, I feel like we'll really start to see all of these plot threads come together and set us up for true colors, especially since the third temple will likely be the first time all three girls meet since being transported, there is definitely a lot to look forward to. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day, and until next time guys, take care.